Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. If you pay any attention to the credit card industry, there's a good chance you've either read or heard about the article from this past Sunday in the Wall Street Journal that reported that Wells Fargo is supposedly losing millions of dollars every month as the card issuing bank for the Built Rewards MasterCard. There's been a lot of chatter about this on online discussion forums, and so I thought I would weigh in with my two cents as well. Now, I think that maybe my take is a little bit different different than uh, some people's. Really, what it boils down to is any publicity is good publicity because the truth of the matter is that there are now millions of people that know about the Built MasterCard that probably had no idea that it even existed. Now, I do have a handful of more specific thoughts. Number one, someone at Wells Fargo wanted that article to be written. The number of specifics that you have in there, and I have to imagine the uh, reporters from the Wall Street Journal saw some documentation that these things are real in terms of the percentages that uh, Built Rewards is getting from Wells Fargo on card transactions and the uh, commission on each new card uh, issued, all those sorts of things. You generally do not see those nitty gritty numbers Numbers in any kind of reporting unless somebody really has wanted to spill the beans and put it all out there. So Wells Fargo wanted to make sure the story got written and they gave those reporters quite a bit of information. Now whether that was Wells Fargo as a company or that was someone specific within Wells Fargo is impossible to know from the outside. But they obviously wanted it to be seen and of course it comes across as a negotiating tactic because they are saying we are losing all this money and we have already told Built Rewards, and this is in the article, that when the uh, contract is over in 2029, we are not going to renew it under the current uh, situation that we are in. Now, of course, 2029 is five years from now, so Wells Fargo wants to get out in front of it and have things renegotiated a long time before 2029. The second takeaway for me from the article, and I'm sure Wells Fargo was not hoping that anyone was going to have this takeaway, but it makes it appear as if Built Rewards was sort of the master negotiator, that they got a really sweet deal from Wells Fargo, and really Built needed Wells Fargo more than the other way around, at least that's what you would think from the outside. So it looked like Wells Fargo was paying a transaction fee to Built on every rent payment that went through, even though they were not making any money themselves on those rent payments, hoping that they were going to make money on other transactions that went through the built card and they were giving a certain amount of money for each new card opened. And so, you know, a lot of us from the outside looked at this card and said, how is this working? How much longer can this go? And we sort of assumed that Built was burning through some venture capital money that at some point there was going to be a reckoning because the numbers weren't going to work out. But it looks like the numbers were working out pretty well for Built. Actually, it was really because Wells Fargo was taking on so much more of the risk than you would have expected in a partnership like this. And you look at something like uh, Goldman Sachs and uh, Apple, and so they've been having their differences. Goldman Sachs basically losing all kinds of money on the Apple card. That one's at least a little more understandable because Apple is your partner. And so if you want to make a big splash and you partner with Apple and it doesn't go very well, well, you can say we did it for a reason. It's a little stranger to partner with a uh, fintech startup that most people have never heard of and then sort of have things not go well because your contract is really not written very well. Now, of course, we're still hearing these things from the outside. It's still from the Wall Street Journal. But again, those numbers came from somewhere, and I have to imagine they came from somebody at Wells Fargo. So it doesn't really make Wells Fargo look so good. And then the third point to make is probably the most important one, and it's what I said at the beginning of this video. The article really, as far as I'm concerned, is good for both Wells Fargo and Built because it raises awareness of the Built credit card. To begin with, many people that read that article probably couldn't care less about what the negotiations are, and it did have sort of very, very dramatic headline about Wells Fargo losing all this money. They didn't even mention Built in the headline. That shows you how much that the Wall Street Journal did not believe that most people were even going to know what Built was. So so this is something that raises awareness and someone might read this article and forget all the rest of the stuff and be like, oh, I can get a credit card where I can pay my rent, earn points, and there's no transaction fee. I'd sign up for that card. They don't care about all the rest of it. So as far as I'm concerned, that's good for both Wells Fargo and Built. Yes, some people will read this article and they'll shake their heads and they'll be like, oh, these uh, stupid thing. You're going to have a card that's going to you know, give uh, rent on a credit card and not have any transaction fees. Well, you deserve to lose money on that card. But in the end, this is a card that can be tweaked. And I'm sure both Wells Fargo and Built have reason to 
try to make this relationship work. Wells Fargo has an investment in Built even beyond what they are doing as the card issuer. So there are tweaks that can happen here, whether that is, and probably this is the most important one that I expect would happen, you are going to have a situation where probably in the future, you're going to have to make more purchases on the Built credit card in addition to your rent payment in order to earn the points on that rent payment. Right now it is very nominal and some people do super small transactions just to reach the limit necessary in order to get the points on their rent. That will probably be increased. There's no foreign transaction fees right now. You could imagine that those might be added and other tweaks, maybe even an annual fee could be added for people that want to have their rent payments above a certain amount. Some people are paying much less every month for their rent than other people who live in big cities. So it is possible you could even have two versions where there's an annual fee on them if you want uh, you know, your rent payments beyond a certain amount to earn points. So there's a lot of ways that things could be reworked and there is uh, incentive for both Wells Fargo and Built to make the relationship work. Built would like Wells Fargo obviously to uh, re-up with them when 2029 rolls around. So they're going to probably want to make nice now in order for that to happen because they're probably not gonna have a lot of other card issuers uh, lining up to become their partner if things don't kind of go well with Wells Fargo down the rest of this road here. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but to me, the most interesting thing probably is how specific we uh, got in terms of the numbers on the deal that they have. And then of course, the fact that it just raised awareness across the board about the Built card, which is good for Wells Fargo and Built. Would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews. We talk personal finance, we talk deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. If you're not gonna go to the website or leave a comment here, you're probably gonna wanna watch that video next.